Welcome to the Food J Podcast, all your news about Open JDK. On Tuesday, May the 14th, I was in Cologne, Germany at the JCon conference. I spoke with speakers and visitors about all things Java. I had so much amazing talks that I will combine them into several podcast episodes in the coming weeks. Let's start with Geert-Jan Willinga, who joined me to the conference. You are the father of Fuji. Explain <laughs> what we are doing here today. Well, we're here to, um, to do exactly this, to make a couple of uh, podcasts uh, live at the JCon conference. Fantastic conference. Hundreds of people are going to be here today. And we're going to speak to as many as possible about what they're doing with Java, what excites them, why they're here, if they're doing a session, what it's about, just to uh, connect with people and bring them together as uh, friends of OpenJDK. Yes. So we are here at uh, JCon in Köln, uh, Germany. Um, there are four rooms, so there are a lot of speakers today, but also the next days. We're only here today for the podcast. Yes. Uh, we'll see who we get uh, here at, at the desk to talk to. Uh, you will be my partner in crime to find them. Absolutely. Let's first listen to two of the organizers of the conference and Java Pro, Marcus Kent and Richard Fitchner. I'm Marcus. Um, I'm uh, CEO of MicroStream. Uh, and uh, run the Eclipse Store pro uh, project together with my team, the uh, open source project. I'm uh, one of the founders of the, the JCon conference and uh, uh, one of the co-organizers together with Richard and the uh, uh, Java user group Overfiles uh, and also editor-in-chief uh, of the Java Pro magazine. So people who are uh, regular listeners and watchers of this uh, podcast, they have seen you in the previous edition where we talked about Jack Oberplatz and about this conference. Uh, we are at the beginning of the day. Is everything running smoothly? Yeah, I, I hope so, <laughs> because uh, I don't have to be involved in the organization. So thanks to Richard, yeah. who organizes the conference. So uh, yeah, it looks great. Uh, did, people did, are, no panic yet. <laughs> no panic. So uh, we have more participants than mm -hmm. uh, last year, and we are growing. And uh, so we're super excited uh, to have you here yeah. uh, check on. I've seen uh, indeed when I entered the room, it's really quiet. Everyone is relaxed. It's uh, lo looking forward for fun day, Java fun day and, and, and JVM and everything related to that. Um, how many speakers do we have uh, during the whole conference? Oh, we have uh, more than 100 international speakers, great speakers uh, again. So uh, a great schedule. Um, and uh, I hope we have a, a lot of participants. Mm -hmm. uh, how many people are visiting? It is a surprise because um, more than a thousand people have enrolled for the conference, mm -hmm. but uh, because we give the uh, uh, Java user group members tickets for free, so yes. uh, we have a high no-show rate. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends. It's it always depends. a surprise. It's a surprise. Um, yeah. But it's a, it's a nice venue. It's a nice organization. So I'm hoping a lot of people are indeed coming. Uh, there are a lot of uh, speakers, so a lot of activities that they can do here. A lot of uh, exhibitors also. Uh, I think they are very important to get this organized. Yes, uh, so um, it's uh, we are all uh, enthusiasts, uh, so we, we love to do that. So uh, and uh, we do it not for commercial purpose. So uh, everybody is motivated and uh, we love Java. And mm -hmm. so to get in contact with the speakers and the participants is, is awesome. And so everybody's very motivated here in the organization. And we have also a new feature this year. Uh, so uh, with uh, we have uh, the, the app Brella where uh, the participants can book a meeting uh, with the, the, the speakers. Mm -hmm. So you can get in contact with the speakers and uh, ask you questions uh, in a 15 minute chat with, uh, with with all speakers at the yeah, conference. That were the one-on-one -on -one, uh, yes. talks that you can have. So you can really reserve a speaker yeah. privately for you to ask your questions or... Right. Uh, maybe if you have ideas to improve their product or their library, something like that. Yeah, right. So uh, because at Java conference, we see all these great speakers at the stage, but most people have a lot of questions and some people are shy, don't want to ask questions and interrupt the, the, the speakers mm -hmm. while they have uh, chats with other participants or other speakers. And so no way to get in contact with the speaker, really. And, and so with this uh, new feature, you can really book a one-to-one um, -one uh, meeting for 15 minutes, can meet and ask you individual questions. Uh, yeah, so this yeah, I hope a great this idea. is uh, valuable. Yeah. Hi, my name is Richard. I'm organizing this conference. Okay, we had your co-organizer uh, a few minutes ago uh, and you were already in the podcast, the previous podcast of Fuji. So people who are regular viewers 
they may know you. Uh, is it hectic or is everything smooth? I'm kind of leaving the panic zone now. Uh, <laughs> everything is running smoothly. I'm waiting for day two because on day one, a lot of things go wrong. And so I'm waiting for day two where everything falls into place and just runs. But I, I haven't seen any panic or so. I, I think everything is okay. We are hiding it very well. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the same message I get from every conference or organizer is the first minutes you think everything is going wrong, but at the end it just flows and, and it's just a happening and everything, everyone is enjoying uh, the yes, sessions. Absolutely. That's uh, is, uh, due to our amazing team that works behind mm -hmm. the scenes to make this all happen and uh, that uh, uh, bring all of the small problems to a halt and um, make a great experience for all of our attendees. Mm -hmm. A lot of volunteers I've seen that uh, are helping you. Um, I've seen also Mar Marie, who's coming from the US. Yes, from Chicago. She's coming from Chicago, especially. But is she also speaking? She's also speaking, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So this is a, ki a combined effort here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's the thing I love about the Java community, that everyone is uh, open to help, not only at conferences, but also if you have a question about a library someone created or a project, you can really get in touch with these people. Uh, you have these one-on-ones here at the conference, but I'm sure if you bump into someone here uh, in the exhibition hall, you can just ask any question to everyone. Absolutely, that's what I love about the Java community, that people are so approachable. And with our one-to-one -one, uh, thing that we are trying out mm -hmm. this year at the conference, we want to make it um, easier for people to engage yeah. in this one-to-one -one, uh, sessions. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know, people it's sometimes hard to approach them and with our one-to-one -one app where you can uh, have a meeting with somebody that you want to talk to mm -hmm. um, we want to make it easier to to lower that hurdle a little bit yeah okay jonathan villa visited jcon as a speaker with a talk about communities i'm jonathan um i'm speaker here at jcon for the second time so i was here last year and now again this year i already had my talk so i'm Free relaxed. as a bird, relaxed, <laughs> and uh, yeah, first thing in the morning. This is my first time for me having the first talk in the morning. Uh, I think I prefer other slots, <laughs> but but yeah, for, on the other side, once you deliver your talk, you're free. So now I'm, I'm happy. So actually, it was the keynote. Maybe there were several at the same time. <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah, there <laughs> were the four time. at the same time, yes. What was your topic? Well, my topic was about talking about communities and events. Um, I've been part of communities for the last uh, 12 years, um, being, uh, well, helping in a, in a Java user group, uh, organizing events, speaking there, uh, also organizing a conference and speaking in other conferences like this one. And finally, uh, I have like the dream job for me so, since time ago that it is to be developer advocate, so connecting to developers. Um, so yes, uh, my talk was about sharing my experience and sharing the things that I think people can use in order to take more more benefit from attending meetups. <clears throat> First, to know that there are meetups, that there are Java user groups, that there are groups like Fuji, uh, sharing information, connecting people. Uh, that's that's super important. But I think not everyone knows that. So I wanted to give a, a talk mm -hmm. about those topics. And that's also the the message we want to spread with with Fuji that. You can learn from a lot of people. A lot of people from within the Java community are sharing their knowledge in blog posts, in videos, in, in articles. It's, it's, it's amazing. The job that you're doing at, at Puj, um, it's super great. Um, I've had the opportunity to share some articles and talk in the Slack. And I have to say that because of Puj, uh, we organized uh, Netherlands tour meetups for me in five minutes. It was amazing. I've never done it so fast. And yeah, it was great. Uh, an amazing experience. And Fuji connects people and shares content. So it's uh, one of the best places to go, yes. Besides community work, what's your role as a developer <clears throat> advocate? Well, I, I work for Sonar 
it's a company that uh, probably people can uh, can know because of the tool SonarCube, a static analyzer. And I work there as a developer advocate, trying to connect people, uh, trying to be one person from the company in the developers' communities, trying to help them just to obviously share uh, the tools and the knowledge behind uh, our company products. But more than that, just to be present in the developer communities, get uh, feedback, uh, know them, uh, and fit the company. And um, yeah, basically to be a bridge between developer communities and the company. Sonar is a company, so it has to make money. Yes. It has to pay you yes. and a lot of other people. Uh, but still, in my Intelligy, I have a free plugin yep. by Sonar that shows me what I did wrong a lot sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can you do that? Still give so much for free and have a company. I find this amazing. A lot of, of open source libraries are also coming from a company. I think that's a difficult exercise. What do we give for free and what is paid? Yeah, definitely. The company, as you said, needs to make money. Um, but I think that from its foundation, it was funded on top of an open source uh, tool, SonarCube, that uh, was open source. The thing is that the founders uh, believed in open source, and they are they still believe in open source, and that to connect to communities, to connect to developers, you first need to deliver. You need to first give. So developers use Sonarlint, <clears throat> as you said, for free, to analyze, well, more than 30 languages in your ID. But then you think, yeah, but then how can Sonar pay salaries? But yes, the progress is that you start using Sonarlint <clears throat> Then you maybe use SonarCube, also the community edition that it is free. But then at a certain point, you need some features or you need <clears throat> um, some support that you cannot have from the community edition. Then your company starts thinking, OK, maybe we should pay this company uh, to have more <clears throat> professional services yeah, yeah. Uh, behind that. And that's why, uh, well, companies start for free. And then at a certain level, they move to the paid version. And that's, I have to say that not all the companies know how to do this, and they are successful on this. So among others, Sonar uh, has been very successful on following this approach. Yeah. We, we had a discussion in one of the earlier podcasts, <clears throat> how to become rich with your open source project. It's difficult. <laughs> that was the conclusion. Well, I don't know. I'm not rich. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I assume that uh, to be rich, yes, it's not that easy. And you need to have a very good project, a very good product, and to connect with developers and also be in the right moment, in the right place. And, so, and solve a real problem. Yes, exactly. If you can do that. I've seen this with, with one of my... Uh, Belgian Java uh, heroes who has created Job Runner. Yep. He also created an open source project and built a company on top of that. Again, providing extra features and support. And yeah, uh, so it is possible indeed. Yeah, definitely it's possible. Well, we, we have a company, a very known company that makes their life having a lot of open source. Red Hat has a lot of upstream projects and a lot of people contribute that, they contribute to that. And yeah, for some of them, they have the productized downstream version and they make money on that, but they still contribute a lot. I have to say that not everyone does does it and no. as successful as, as but them. But that's, that's the open source community feeling. And it's the same with JetBrains. Yes. You can have a, a very good IDE yes. for free. For free. And then pay for the extra features exactly. again. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. Of course, ChatGPT AI machine learning was also a hot topic at JCon. My next guests had to talk about it. 
Sometimes people arrive here at the boot, I shake them a hand, and the next minute or <laughs> second they are here at the seat. Who are you and what brings you to JCOM? Uh, thanks a lot. Um, my name is Shoham, um, and what brings me here is community, Java community. Um, I've been away for a, from a physical conference for a, for a long time. I saw you last on FOSDEM, but that's a different side of community yeah. than this. And uh, I was missing people to meet and shake hands and say hi. And yeah. That's the first biggest reason I'm here. And there are a few sessions I really want to attend. Yeah. And uh, that's why. Let's first compare FOSDEM. So FOSDEM is an open source event. It's not really a conference, a conference because, no. No. yeah, it's, it's uh, organized a bit differently, yeah. but a lot of different topics in a lot of rooms. Yeah. And Java was only a small, small part, of, part it. of it. Yes. Uh, while here we are. It's all about Java. Java and GVM. Yeah. Let's call it like that. And there's uh, also open source side of it. And open honest. source side, in, indeed, because it's also a jug organizing it. Yeah. Um, what's your main activity within Java? Um, my main activity within Java uh, changed over the years for a while, to be honest. And I mean, last one year, I'm quite busy with um, uh, Gen AI and Java integration. Um, AI is one side where Java is not so strong, in my opinion, and that's changing. And I, I, I really like the way it is going right now. Yeah. There are so many uh, different SDKs to work with, much easier to um, work with AI, even though I don't have a data and AI background, never studied that properly. But still, as a Java developer and with ideas to bring to the market, I can still work with it, and yeah. I, I quite love it, actually. So that's that's really the focus yeah. right now for me. And that's the strong thing about the Java community, all these amazing libraries and toolkits. I don't have any knowledge about machine learning, AI, and still I was able to create a chat application in Java VIX because of langchain 4 j Yeah. Which is one of these amazing libraries. Yeah, you, you presented it on FOSDEM and, as well, And that right? was indeed my topic. Yeah. Um, and mainly what, what went wrong <laughs> during that <laughs> development uh, because I'm not an expert and, and yeah, trying out things. And that's what, uh, what we can do with these, with these yeah, libraries. Yeah, true. I was, I was talking to Mary uh, downstairs and it's still a niche. We both uh, agree. We are in Microsoft, me and Mary also. We are very close to this technology. So we also have a bit of a tunnel vision. So when we look outside and that's why I move around and visit all these conferences mm -hmm. and community to understand where everybody else is and what can we do to bring them to the level where we want them to, to be honest so i feel it's still niche and we have a lot to learn we have a lot to achieve um and it, over in, in in this year i think it'll it'll grow a lot a lot and it's changing so fast yeah to be honest yeah. yesterday there was the announcement of uh, openai 4.0 which is combining I, I didn't i just saw a few tweets combining so video and audio and image and so it, it, you, you, in my opinion it's a it's a very modernized version of siri or um android um, uh, yeah. uh, voice okay. assistant but it can do a lot more so you can process images audios translate everything you can have a conversation with it so Maybe, maybe you can also have a live conversation with GPT-40 right now. Yeah. And it, it, if you tell this person um, how to behave, what is the background of it, and it'll it'll do a conversation just like a normal person, which is scary and pretty <laughs> amazing at the same time. I don't know. It's yeah. kind of a feeling you don't have a yeah, but That's what happens with most new technology. It yeah. can also be very scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why a lot of developers think that their job can become obsolete while well, it's actually no, maybe I, just an extra tool. Yeah, it's an extra, yeah. I believe yeah. it is an extra tool and it'll only make us stronger. To be honest, yeah. every technological advancement always went through the phase of scariness and then adoption came up properly or yeah. it went down properly. Yeah. And I think we, we, have a, we have a lot to achieve here and we have a lot to process here as well. Without humans, AI is nothing. So yeah. if, if you are afraid of AI, then I think you need to learn and embrace and know more about AI. I, I use it, I'm making a, a pet project, my first steps into Kotlin, for instance, and I asked ChatGPT to guide me there, give me an example of how I can do this, and that's how I learn, for instance, now a new language or a new way of, of programming. Yeah, coding side, to be honest, I am still not really convinced with AI capabilities yet. Um, although GPT-4.0, the, the one which is released yesterday, it claimed to have a better coding style 
and also Stack Overflow is um, uh, combining with uh, OpenAI. Yet to see what happens, but I still think it is very primitive, the coding generation, code generation aspect of it. Uh, but we, we will get there because this is just a starting point. Everything should start somewhere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Indeed, it's not always correct, but that's yeah. how you learn. That's how you learn. Yeah. How you learn how, yeah. how to fix things. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, you said you're looking forward to a few of the talks. Yeah. Any particular ones you can mention? Um, I'm looking forward to one talk about um, uh, the basics of off. So Kubernetes, uh, API Gateway, what's the difference between API management, API Gateway. So it's a very, my day-to-day -day work is about um, infra architecture, uh, a little bit of app architecture as well. But these are the concepts which I try to explain as well. So I'm quite curious how Abdel going to, uh, so he's from Google, so I'm, I'm going to, yeah. I'm quite curious how he's going to um, explain, uh, explain that. Another uh, good talk that I'm looking forward to is, um, uh, I forgot the name of the speaker, sorry about that, uh, but he's gonna, he was, he's gonna share his experience on uh, implementing a large language model bot. So I'm also curious because I'm working with a lot of startups in Netherlands and um, they have their own problems. I want, to, I want to see what this person has faced or they faced in doing it. So these are the top two one I'm, I'm really, really looking yeah, forward to. Yeah. And there are a lot more. There are a lot more. I mean, I cannot, it, it, it's just uh, just super too much. Yeah. I'm glad they, they put it on YouTube because I can watch it later on. Yeah, yeah. I'm Mary Grigleski. I'm here at JCon as first also as a speaker, um, then also helping out as a volunteer. And also I'm also on the program committee. So it's kind of multifunction, but it's just glad to be here. It's not like work, it's like, fun yeah, to be here seeing all the people yeah can you explain me how you got involved in jcon in germany yeah you live in chicago right that's correct yes so how, how this mix yeah i think first i think the connection is the java users group because the organizer here richard and his company they are very avid and you know enthusiastic mm -hmm. jug um, organizers here in Germany um, and then I met Richard too at some conferences uh, from speaking every fellow speakers and then somehow I even forgot exactly how but then because of this connection speaker fellow speakers fellow jug leaders and that's how I became involved mm -hmm. too with JCon and on the program committee which I'm so honored feel so honored and yeah and I love coming to Europe and so yes <laughs> yes I say, yeah of course I'll be here <laughs> so. um, you were already in one of the Fuji podcasts I think about we yeah. talked about the jug that's correct so yes. you're organizing jack chicago yeah that's yeah. correct jack chicago yeah and uh, that's the actually we also have another illinois jug but that one since COVID has been quiet but for us uh chicago jug we've been uh, you know keep going for throughout this whole time yeah mm -hmm. so yeah i'm still very much uh, very actively engaged and doing a lot of work and all that and speakers and you know from that to getting venues getting sponsors all these things yeah it's uh yes it's fun and yeah. it's a important part of the community we just talked about the community some That's right. a lot of developers are not aware of the jugs that they exist that they yeah. are maybe in the you're neighborhood right. you're right so we should probably be talking more about them so that people are aware of them that they can go sure. to a jug and learn about what's evolving in java yeah yeah that, that and frank you're exactly right it, it is very true when we work with it every day we think we know so much but it's the fact that there are also new people getting into the ecosystem. And you're right, that's a great reminder. Yeah, we need to also do more promotion. Mm. Yeah, and like advocating for it too. Yeah, yeah. So that's my homework when I get back to <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> I gotta like start promoting more. Yeah. And also post COVID is actually a bit of a challenge trying yeah, to get yeah. people to come back again. So yeah, yeah I hope to do that. Um, you're also a speaker. Yes. What's your topic? Sure. I'll be talking about generative AI. So Gen AI, Chat GPT, all these things. And uh, just ha just so happened in my last job, I was there starting to, to do Gen AI. And I see a lot of potential in the Java space. I mean, Java is such a robust language. Yeah, some people might say, oh, it's old, but I don't think so. We're such like a robust language and very strong ecosystems and can handle things, you know, kind of uh, in a production, in a multi-cluster type of environment. And I see just a lot of potential. So my job here is to really talk about Gen AI, what it is, it's not uh, unreachable and uh, it's a growing area, very hot and mm -hmm. everything. So that's what I'm gonna talk about more, introductory generative AI, also introduce a vector database, similarity searches, which is so important in doing yeah 
chat GPT type of uh, searches. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not an expert in this topic. I sure. just did an experiment with Langchain 4J. Yeah. Which is amazing. That's because right. Because what you can do, again, yeah. it's, it's Java. If you can have a good library, you only exactly. need minimal code exactly. to achieve something. Yeah. Um, you say Java is old, but Java is also very much evolving. Yes. Do you think that Java is evolving fast enough in the good direction to be able to do more with this chat-based machine some... learning AI thing? Sure. I, I feel definitely Java can advance more, but I think the reality is that there doesn't seem to be as many um, open source groups that are actually focusing their efforts in developing libraries. However, you mentioned Langchain 4J. I think it's a very good one. And they are, you know, kind of going after the concept of the, the very popular now JavaScript and Python based uh, Langchain. Mm -hmm. So that's a one really good library. I think that's still a little lagging behind at the moment. Um, but I do see, you know, it's um, if we make it more and more um, uh, people being aware of it, you know, advocating more, I feel more people jump on board um, of it and promoting mm -hmm. it. I see a, a good potential of it becoming like the, the you know, the yeah. de facto SDK for developing Java libraries that's interacting with large language models, for example. Is so, that also what you're using in your talk? Uh, yeah, that's right. I will also be introducing a little bit an introductory on how do you, what kind of libraries you can use as Java developers. Yeah, Langchain 4J, for example. And there's also a Microsoft too. They also have an open source like Semantic Kernel, for example. They also have Java SDK yep. and some others too that I will also be discussing. They may be lesser known, but there are also some open source libraries here and there. Yeah. I see that Spring is also doing something. I don't know yeah. what's behind it, or maybe it's their own thing. I don't know. Sure, yeah, and you reminded me, yes. And in fact, I want to get my hands on into it, which is Spring. Yeah, they, you know, with Java ecosystem, who would be, you know, Spring would never be left behind. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, Spring AI. So uh, that one, I myself, I have to admit, at this point, I haven't had chance to work with it yet, but I do see it being Spring ecosystem, yeah, I'm hoping yeah. to, through Spring, the framework, bringing in AI functionality, I'll be very interested to see how it works. But I understand at this point too, it's very, very early stage. And yeah, but I, I've also read that it should be coming yeah, up yeah, pretty yeah. soon, up and coming. So and then we have all these things going on in Java, JEPs for memory improvements and vectors. Yes. And then yeah. so I guess exactly. this will all have an impact on, on performance, on what you can do yes, with Java, with Java that, combined with AI. Oh, yeah, totally. In fact, my previous company I worked for, uh, Jonathan Ellis, he was doing this J-Vector, which is at the moment kind of more applicable for Datastax, their managed cloud platform, J-Vector. And it's actually very efficient and makes use of uh, Project Panama working with Vector. Um, vector API. Yeah. So yeah, that that's also I think it's it's in the works. There are a lot of things going on. So yeah, yeah. Great. Um, you're a volunteer here. Yeah. So does that mean that you have time to visit other talks? Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yes, yeah. I I will find time. That's for sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. Did you yes. schedule something because we just had a discussion if you should schedule your talks up front or not? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. So any anything you're looking forward to? For, for this particular yeah. conference. Yeah, I think uh, mostly I have to say, I mean, as much as we're kind of looking for technical contents, but at the same time being able to see people, otherwise I'm working remotely from yeah. home. Yeah, sometimes you just see people, oh, goodbye, and you turn off your computer. <laughs> but here it's like, great, you see people, you can kind of like shake hands and hug and yeah. yeah so I'm kind of really, that part, the, the people engagement in, in interaction is so amazing. I, I love it every time I come. Yeah, so, so amazing that you come from Chicago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank I, you. I find this so unbelievable. Yeah. All these people in Devrel and, and related yeah. jobs that's right. that you're traveling so much. Yeah. Spending a lot of time at, at conferences. True. Yes. Isn't that also hard? <laughs> Yes, I do have to admit it is not easy, yeah. but amazing. Every time, right, for me, when I was leaving home, I said, oh, I got to pack my suitcase and all that, and all my tickets, and I have to make plans. But every time, once I'm there, I said, oh, this is great. I'm so glad I'm yeah. here. You forget <laughs> about all the pain, so to speak. It's not really pain, but but I do have to admit, I was at DevOps UK right before this, and my um, flight, actually, they, the connecting flight was delayed or, no, canceled. Yeah. And so my suitcase was lost, and okay. that was a pain in the neck. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but eventually worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it, it can be kind of challenging in that sense. But to me, though, um, I think the benefits of being able to interact and you know kind of talk with people yeah. in person. I think that 
kind of outweighs any other pain you have. It's, it's kind of no pain, no gain, but this is like <laughs> good. You know, I'm just enjoying myself fully yeah. when I'm here. Yeah. And enjoying so, Europe. I can understand oh, as an American. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Enjoying Europe so much. Yeah, I was like at the cathedral here in Cologne and it's like, oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I walk. I like walking on cobblestone uh, <laughs> ground. It's like, ah, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. The things, the uh, buildings are a thousand years old yeah. or something. I love it. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. Yeah. My name is Mohammed. Um, originally from Morocco, coming uh, from. I'm going to put it in Stockholm, and uh, yeah, I work as a backend engineer in uh, in uh, Spotify. Okay. Thanks Good. for having me. Yeah, sorry, I had to arrange the microphone a bit. No worries. Um, are you also a speaker? Yes, I am. And what's the talk you're bringing? I'm going to talk about not the surprising topic, Java and machine learning. So basically how we can use Java as a language to train our models uh, and deploy machine learning applications using Java. So it's like end-to-end -end machine learning stack using, using complete Java. Okay, but you're touching something different that we didn't mention yet, yeah. is training a model. Yeah. So what I've done as an experiment is use Langchain4j. Yeah. I fed it some JSON with some docs. Yeah. Was that training a model? No, that's called the uh, inference, like kind of. Oh, uh, you, you said that you fit it with some with some data. Some data. To exactly. So that's in. rag. That's like you are enhan you are adding yeah. some knowledge to yeah. the Gen AI or LLM. Yeah. So it can use this as a knowledge base yeah. to retrieve some data. But you're really talking about building a model. Exactly. So I'm not talking about gener generative AI or LLMs or all the hypes around machine, this new machine learning. Um, going a little bit in the basics, to the basics, I'm talking about uh, neural networks and traditional machine learning algorithms and how you ca we can use that to train, deploy, use uh, machine learning uh, models using Java. So I'm basically doing a comparison between three three frameworks. Uh, one from Eclipse Foundation Deep Learning for Java, one from AWS Deep Learning or Java Deep Learning, and a third one from Oracle uh, called, I forgot the name, shame on me. It's in your presentation. Yeah, it's exactly. It's <laughs> going to be on, uh, on the presentation. Tribio, that's the name, Tribio, Oracle and Tribio. Is one better than the other, or are they just different, or? It, it, so that's basically my, what my, my talk is. It's, it's, it's different on what the use case is. Uh, I find Java deep learning from AWS to be uh, the most beginner friendly and the most uh, get it up and running quickly. So it's pretty straightforward, pretty useful, especially if you want to use it or directly using it to start experimenting with machine learning algorithms. They have what we call or predefined models that you can deploy out of the box. We call that model zoo. And it's they have a lot of abstractions which make it a lot of uh, a lot more easier to work with, more beginner friendly. If you want to have a bigger toolbox and build your things your own and get it, uh, you know what you're doing, so basically you want to tweak and optimize and stuff like that. Deep Learning 4G is better than that. Uh, it's better in that case. Uh, so it has full-blown API that enable you to define every step in training your uh, machine learning algorithm. Um, both Java Deep Learning and Deep Learning 4G specializes in neural networks. If you only need traditional machine learning and you are especially coming from an enterprise world, that's what Oracle Tribu excels at. It's uh, have a lot of integration with text files, with databases, they built all those integration to make it easier to integrate in uh, enterprise context. So it's basically, that's what each, what the TLDR of my talk is, each one is better depending on what you want to do with it, basically. And why do you need to train your own model so that it can reason on your own database, for instance? Exactly. Um, privacy, so you don't want to leak your data to the public, right? Uh, so. With LLMs, you either do rag and then fine tune the model within within your data. So either you get open source one and fine tune it. So that's basically retraining and fine tuning, or you basically have a knowledge attached to 
uh, your LLM and that's going to be public one and that there is a risk of the data leaking somehow uh, or anything. So you want to build a model that it, that trained on your knowledge base and your constraints and your data basically. Uh, so the model is aware of, learns about your constraints, uh, your limitation, your business domain or everything. So basically, the more data you have specialized on your domain, the better the model would be. But the, cons the challenge with that is you would need definitely to have a lot of data in order to have better model. Uh, so there's like a question of, it's a, it's a trade off as anything in software engineering. So it depends. Dep exactly, it depends <laughs> on what your use case. But with what you're saying now, it is possible as a developer to just experiment with this and, and make some model by yourself, just... Exactly. What I'm showing in my talk is I'm, I have a MacBook M1 machine. So I'm, I was able to reproduce. I'm not sure if you watched the uh, TV show, uh, the Silicon Valley. Yeah, I know it. But the so, they, what... they, so basically, it was a American TV, TV show. And then they built a model back in the days, hot dog or not hot dog. So basically, you took a yeah. camera, you take a picture, and then it tells you if it's a hot dog or not. With... Deep Learning 4G, I was able to build a model that was trained on some data on my machine and have like a decent percentage precision around to de detecting if a picture is hot dog or not hot dog. So it's, it's becoming now with machines becoming more and more powerful to train our model in our machine and experiment with machine learning algorithms, which is pretty good. With, you mentioned Langchain 4G in the beginning. The open source community and the LLMs sphere is doing an amazing job making large language models running in our machines, in our uh, laptops, which is great as well. So there's no excuse nowadays if you want to run machine learning. So it's the entry, the entry barrier, entry level is becoming really low. And you can do it with Java. Exactly. That's yeah. that's amazing. If you need traditional machine learning and knowledge works, as I mentioned, deep learning 4G, Java deep learning, or Trivio could be a good use case. If you want to just use LLMs, Langchain 4J is your go-to, basically. So you can do everything with Java. So nothing, if you're a Java developer, nothing stopping you today from starting with your journey with machine learning. Let's close this episode of the FuJ podcast with two other guests, not Java developers, but members of the organization team of the NLJUG. Hello, I'm Richelle Busseniers. I'm the partner manager from the NLJUG, the Dutch Java developer community. And uh, I'm Simon. I'm uh, the community manager of uh, the NLJUG. You are the new community manager, I heard? Yeah, new community manager now for three months, yes. Yeah. Your first conference or? Um, it's not my first conference, I think the third. And uh, yeah, I like it. It's really nice. Uh, nice people and uh, good environment, yes. Yeah, uh, you got also your Java magazine with you. Yes, uh, you want to promote this? <laughs> well, I don't really need to promote it because when you become an Energy member, uh, then you get a uh, Java magazine four times a year for free. But now I didn't bring it for nothing today. So I know somebody's going to go like, she did, did she bring it? I did bring it. <laughs> I just received my copy last this week. Okay, uh, the yeah. new edition? The new edition, yeah, but we didn't haven't seen it at the office yet. So, okay, I, yeah, it's I, I great. have it at home. So yeah. I'm maybe the only Belgian subscriber, I don't know. No, we have a lot of you Belgian subscribers. Okay, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's only, nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, when you have to send it, it, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we um, love the Belgian subscribers. It was mainly Dutch articles, but you're switching to English, correct? Yes, that's, uh, that's true. We are switching all events to uh, English. We're switching uh, a JFall or JSpring, which will be uh, in exactly one month. Uh, uh, it will totally be in, in, in English and also uh, uh, a JFall will be in English. So, um, um, and developers, they, they don't mind reading articles in no. English because all terms are also said in English. So sometimes it's really funny to read the Dutch article with all the English uh, uh, technical words in it. So, yeah. yeah. But there is a discussion on going on the mailing list, uh, on the Jug mailing list, to maybe have a conference in local languages that this could be important for some people. I have the impression in the Netherlands, Belgium, we don't have an issue with English. But sometimes, yes, maybe the conversation is easier when you switch to your local language. Yeah, but if you uh, attend the event, 
the 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 language will be a local mm -hmm. uh, but if there's uh, sometimes ten boot uh, personnel uh, are uh, englishly uh, talking people so then you switch uh, mm -hmm. automatically to english and if you are uh, if you uh, if you studied in the netherlands you learn dutch you learn english you learn french you learn, you learn german yeah I should, Belgium. <laughs> I should know my French and yeah, German, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to admit it's a bit of a problem. Yeah. <laughs> my English is okay. Yeah. Um, Simon, well, how do you feel about the community? How do I feel? The how, Java how community. Mean? For us as a... Uh, Marit is, is very... <laughs> big fan. Um, for us as Java developers, it's really great that you can just go to the famous people, the famous speakers, yeah. and just ask them their question. They're very uh, open and very responsive. Is that a bit yeah. the impression you get as a, as a newbie yeah, in no, this community? Yeah, for the um, uh, the, the conferences uh, for the, for the Java, is this my first one? Uh, so yeah, this is my first experience, and uh, the people who have uh, who, 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 who did spoke uh, are very nice and very kind. So yeah, that's uh, that's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, but it's uh, it's all new for me, so mm -hmm. I have to learn everything and uh, and uh, yeah, experience everything. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Are you here to find new speakers or new sponsors or just for the community? Uh, we are here for everything, for the for the people, for the yeah, for for uh, yeah, for the companies that are here, but also for the speakers yeah. connecting. Uh, we did spoke to the um, organizer of the JCon, and uh, yeah, we did connect with him. Uh, it was very nice to talk with him uh, as well. So uh, yeah, and yeah. they're also publishing a ma magazine. So yeah, yeah we saw it. Yeah. We didn't, I don't. We did, yeah, we, I have to look. We for still one, uh, yeah. did not find it. But yeah, they, they're, yeah, but they're to switching it. to digital, as far as I know. So ah, okay, okay, so that's okay, maybe, nice. the, yeah. maybe the difference. Okay. All right. Uh, any sessions you are looking forward to? Any talks, or you just? We're totally not we're, technical. Yeah. We we we, we don't <laughs> know, we do don't know anything from uh, from the development. So from, from, it, uh, it's <laughs> nice to have you around here because that's also shows that it's more than just programming oh community. yeah yeah exactly yeah we i was uh, searching for a nice talk but uh, maybe we can find uh, yeah. one yeah just dive in yeah, you'll yeah, learn exactly. something yeah, definitely all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is course. it not about the language it's about the community it's about best practices yeah how you organize maybe just yeah. not the code but your your yeah. organization and how you work exactly it can yeah. be a, a, a you a always nice... learn something yeah. yes okay. good well it's, it's nice to I think it's also nice to have at these conferences uh, a time slots for all the community, uh, uh, the, 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 the job community mm -hmm. and, and, and partner manage to come together and to discuss about uh, how co about community building and so on, because um, they do it in also in, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, they used to do it at the Java one. And um, I really like to attend it because I, I went a few times. I mm. went like, I'm not technical, but those were the best sessions ever. Hearing about the Brazil jerk yeah. with 30,000 members, you can really learn from yeah, them. Yeah, so if, the, if, if we really need something for us, for our job, then it's connecting with other uh, community mm. uh, managers. And that's that's the nice thing what Brazilian jerk is doing, but also the NL jerk. It's not only a jerk. You have a magazine, you have uh, trained the, train the speaker, you have yeah. all these kind of, yeah. of, of speaker academy indeed speaker, yeah. 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 Uh, the java game i don't know what's the name actually the, the competition that you have oh yeah masters of java, masters yes. Of java. yes yes it's going so, to yeah. be big this year yeah 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 we already have a lot of uh, attendees are subscribing and it's already on november 6th so, so so if we explain this so it's a competition the java co fun code coding competition yeah well, it's a fun progging yeah. contest yeah. but the, it's they say it's fun but if you become one of the best, uh, if you win, you're one of the best Java developers in the Netherlands. So, oh, yes. if I can may do a commercial break, <laughs> then please, because it's for free. But if you feel like you're a Java developer, you think like, well, I'm the best Java developer in the Netherlands. Subscribe to Masters of Java. Is it per person or per team? Uh, you can do it on your own, uh, but you can also subscribe uh, per team for two people. Okay. So um, find yeah. find your best colleague. Yeah, find your best colleague. Do your thing. We're going to arrange prizes this year. It's not, of course, it's not about the prize. It's about the fame. It's a fame. But uh, <laughs> it, it's it's getting bigger and bigger because it will be our eleventh time. I think okay. we organize uh, Masters of Java, and we are so very proud to organize it every year. Okay. Yeah. So that's the call we're gonna do. Is join the Masters of Java yeah. Yeah. and become the best Java developer Java of, the of the Netherlands. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
That's it for this first JCon overview. In the next episode, you'll hear several speakers about Maven, Sonotype, Disciplined Engineering, uh, Code Review, Code uh, Reading, and a lot more. So uh, a lot to look forward to. Hear you next week. Give me a foo, give me a J, give me the friends of OpenJDK.